Um, this is going to be a pretty quick video. Um, this is something uh, I wanted to hit on uh, in the past. I wanted to use the migration or uh, of birds or what I'm going to use here is sharks um, or different things to do with nature that prove distances and certain things to do with the nature of, of our reality. Some years ago, there was an eagle. I saw a documentary, a part of a documentary about. I was busy at the time. I could only partly watch it. But this eagle required that to do what it did. It required that there was a 200 mile radius in all the, from its point of flat plane for it to do what it did based off of it that, it, that that's how it hunted and that's how its eyesight, eyesight, eyesight worked. And it, it was like basically a radius of 200 miles around it. And that's how it hunted. And its eyesight was unbelievable, supposedly. Um, I just couldn't remember the name of this particular eagle. And I didn't see the documentary again. But it basically meant that for the eagle to exist and survive and do what it does, the earth had to be f flat, <laughs> basically, right? This is a video here. This is called from a, a videographer called Shark Bites. Uh, he's an English lad and he covers things to do with sharks and different things like that. Now, don't be the. It says here the fastest ever great white sharks, or, uh, white sharks 12,000 mile ocean trek, right? Now, I'm not going to go through all the video, I just link it in the description. Um, basically, it's about a great white shark called Nicola, I think. Uh, it's a 12 foot great white shark who leaves from South Africa, who was, was hanging around this one particular part of South Africa and is well documented for being there. And there is a, a there is a, a, a researcher who who became very, very um, familiar with her and her with him as well or whatever. Um, but she they had a tag this back in 2004. They tagged her. And it wasn't a tag where, like they have now, where they can constantly observe the movements. It was a tag where they put the tag in and it's designed to, um, let's just say, to uh, uh, pop out after a certain length of time. And then they will try and find the tag, right? That was the whole thing. But the shark, according to what they say, shark swam uh, a, a, record, a, a record distance in... Uh, a time of 99 days which is almost you're kind of heading for not exactly but it's heading for three and a half months or something like that or just over three months for, between South Africa and Australia now it went to I have it uh, uh, the way I worked it out is from Cape Town to Perth it actually went from a place slightly west of Cape Town and it went to Exmouth uh, up in northwest but I just used Perth and I'll show you what I did in a minute <clears throat> but this is going to be a pretty, pretty quick video so, the Great Witch Journey here. Uh, sorry, I'm just going to put it down a bit. So, officially, they say that the shark traveled 6,900 miles in 99 days, but that would give it an average speed of 2.9 miles per hour. Now, I'm taking into account that over that time, there's going to be uh, currents and different things like that um, that will go on. But also, the shark is not going to swim in a straight line or in an arc. It's go the shark is going to move around in all different directions. She will still be going where she's going, but she will still be moving in all different directions. And they know that she made it to this uh, Exmouth, uh, to Exmouth in Western Australia, because that's where the uh, tag popped off. So they know for certain that she made it there within 99 days of the tag being put into her. And she wasn't spotted, or the tag didn't turn up on anywhere, um, on any, I don't know what way they, they, they track them, didn't turn up anywhere until then. Um, then she did eventually go back to where she started, but uh, that was like six months later. But she spent, they say uh, that she traveled 6,900 miles in the 99 days, right? But that would be a globe distance, and that would only give her an average speed of 2.9 miles per hour. Whereas the average swimming speed for a great white is 4 to 6 miles per hour. 
Now I've seen, from when I was looking at it, I've seen it faster than that. Um, where they were saying the average speed was closer to 20 or 25 kilometers an hour, which would be probably about 10 to 14 miles per hour. But I'll just go with four to six miles per hour because it's fine. Um, the average swimming, just for just for comparison, the average swimming speed for a human is two miles per hour, right? So, so that would mean that this big massive journey in 99 days that the shark was only swimming 0.9 miles per hour faster than the human. I don't think so, right? Considering they have an average of four to six miles per hour swimming speed. Um, the top swimming speed for a great white shark is between 25 and 35 miles per hour. I suppose it depends on the size of the shark and its strength and whatever. At the top swimming speed, swimming speed for a human is five miles per hour. Like that'd be someone who's an Olympic swimmer or whatever. So what I did was this, just to keep it brief. I used Cape Town to Perth. What I did is I took the la uh, using the latitude and longitude gradient as correct form, um, which is flat. Um, I used Cape Town's latitude to create a circumference. And that's its latitude creates a circumference of forty six thousand seven hundred and twenty miles, right? Uh, one degree of this, right, when you divide it by three hundred and sixty, is one hundred twenty nine point seven seven miles. That um, <clears throat> and there's ninety seven. I don't. I, I don't know if I can trust it, but if you work it out, there's ninety seven point uh, four three four three degrees between of latitude, which uh, long longitude. Sorry, between Cape Town and Perth. Uh, I don't trust it. I reckon there's a bit, bit more. Um, uh, I'm not going to go into that now. But just using this, uh, if I multiply 97.43 degrees by 129.77, uh, it e equals out at uh, 12,644.24 miles. So 12,644.24 miles divided by 99 days is 127.71 miles per day. 127.71 miles per day divided by 24 hours is 5.321 miles per hour. So I don't know what they're on about with their 6,900 miles um, being some brilliant feat in 99 days for the shark when according to the speed it would be swimming slower than its average speed. Right, And even at 12,644 um, miles of a distance uh, it's still within its average speed. So the distance I would, because I don't, the longitude uh, lines obviously south of the equator are messed with. So I would say that there is more uh, longitude. Uh, I well, I, I can basically show it uh, that there's going to be uh, that the the differences are going to be different between uh, Perth and Cape Town, but it wouldn't matter because the shark wouldn't need to even if you added. Uh, even if we added uh, more distance onto it, which is it's already almost double, you know what what they were claiming it to be on the globe. So it's still almost double what it's claimed to be on the globe. And even at that, the shark wouldn't have any, have any hassle getting there, considering like if you take five miles per hour as its average, um, I, I, normally then a shark could easily uh, up that by 0.32, um with ease, you, you know what I mean, especially when it's traveling and it, it's got a currents with it and that. I mean, there's no reason. And as I said, I saw faster averages for the sharks and I went with the lowest averages I could find, which is between four and six miles per hour. So, like, I don't know what they're talking about with their 2.9 miles per hour <laughs> because over a, because a 6,900 mile distance is not in the 99 days if you look at it like that for a shark. Whereas, uh, even 12,600 uh, miles is no big deal for it. So I reckon it went even further than 12,600 miles. Um, but it doesn't matter because uh, even if it were, went just that distance, it is way more than the globe can understand, can take on board. And it's right within the just the average speed of the shark. So why are they so... Why are why are they so you know blown away by this journey? It's a journey sharks make all the time from you know different parts of the world to other parts of the world. They're always doing it. Great whites are always doing it. You know uh, they move around. Um, so I don't see what the problem is. Maybe the problem is is that the distance is actually massive and way bigger than 
the six thousand nine hundred that they're giving us. Um, um, and the, the, that's what the real thing is, because even at twelve thousand six hundred, it's not astonishing, considering it's at the average speed that the shark is swimming at anyway. So is if you take all the twists and turns of the shark in as well, the shark would have swam a bigger distance anyway than because it's not going to swim in an arc or a straight line. And even at that, I have the distance as an arc. So the shark is not going to swim an arc. It's going to swim at a, a, an angle, different angles, and it's going to go up and down. We're going to be moving up and down in depth and uh, swimming left and right and whatever else. So all that has to be added in. But still, if we just use it like this, using the arc distance, which wouldn't even be a cord, like it'd be bigger than the cord, the shark is still with a 12,600 mile distance between uh, Cape Town and Perth, still be within its average speed. So, I mean, I don't know, why are they so blown away by 6,900 miles? I don't think they are at all. I think whoever is blown away by this, uh, they're actually blown away by the actual distance the shark went. Maybe they must know the actual distance. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Which is at probably at least probably close on or at least double that. So I don't know. Silly little video, but it shows that six thousand nine hundred miles in ninety nine days is nothing for a great white. But an, if because it, it would it could literally go at its snail's pace for it at 2.9 miles per hour because it's it's less than even four miles per hour by 1.9 or sorry 1.1 miles you know what's the problem um it it could easily double that uh i would say or almost double it or easily double it you know if um if we do it let's just say we double let's go 14 just for finish let's just say 14 thousand miles right Divided by 99 days equals 141.41. Right? We divide that by, that's per day, by 24 equals 5.89. So even if we more than doubled 6,900, we brought it to 14,000, it would still be within its average. So, I mean, what's the big deal? Is it that the big deal that is that it's not 6,900 miles? That it's actually closer to fourteen thousand miles. Is that really the big deal? Is that I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. It's like six thousand nine hundred miles. It you know that doesn't make any sense. That you'd be that these people would be blown away by this because that would only be at two point nine miles per average. You know I don't know. It, as I said, silly video, but uh, it's interesting because there's a lot of the stuff out there migration stuff with birds and different things it just doesn't make any sense it makes sense in reality on a flat plane it makes absolutely zero sense on a globe these things but anyway here we are enjoy it thanks for watching